Welcome back to this WGAL News 8 election special. We're closely following the race for the 13th District State Senate seat representing Lancaster County. Democrat Janet Diaz is looking to unseat Republican incumbent Scott Martin. Both candidates talk to News 8's Ann Shannon. We begin with Scott Martin. What's up, buddy? Good morning, Senator. How are you? State Senator Scott Martin okay? isn't afraid to take on a challenge. It's something I've always been passionate about, and I don't know if it's the old athlete in me that that you know you want to overcome these challenges, the hurdles, strategize to get things done. He's proud of his accomplishments, including efforts to strengthen DUI laws and fund pediatric cancer research. When I hear those kind of issues, I know there's so much more that we can do better. His top issue right now? Without question, the thing I hear the, the most from my constituents is how do we recover uh, our economy and do it safely, protecting the most vulnerable moving forward? We have 1.3 million Pennsylvanians who no longer can work. Martin has been vocal in his criticism of the governor's handling of the pandemic. He helped introduce a constitutional amendment that would limit the power of the governor during future emergencies. Government should not be in the forefront. We should be behind. We should be the safety net. We should be getting out of the way of allowing businesses to grow and, and our economy to grow. When it comes to increasing minimum wage, Martin would rather see the focus on job development. Martin started his career in juvenile justice and is a strong supporter of law enforcement. I'll always stand with them and the job they do. And no one should ever take that and say that we aren't going to do the right thing if someone does something bad, because we would. And we have a history of doing that. Martin's also concerned about the current political climate and believes there should be more focus on what brings us together. When you're elected to represent people, you represent all the people. It doesn't mean you're going to agree on everything. I'm very passionate about these things because I know what I lived through in my life. Janet Diaz believes her life story, being brought up by a single mom and experiencing homelessness, help her understand the needs of her community. As a city council member, I realize how much we're lacking in health care. Mental health. It's a major problem when no one has health care. If elected as state senator, Diaz would make it a priority to help those who fall through the cracks of the current system. Establishing a living wage is also a goal. Coming from a mother who made just minimum wage was not enough. She'd also like to see support for child care costs. The McCaskey High grad is advocating for a fair funding formula for public schools. I want to see children be able to, to have the resources in order to get a good quality education just like I did. Diaz does not support cutting police funding. No, I do not believe that we need to um, hit that where we're de you know taking money away from police because what we actually need is to continue all across the state having the training. She wants to include social workers as part of law enforcement. Above all, she says she's not afraid to be an independent thinker. To me, I don't care what party you are. If you're hurting, you need my help. I'm there for you. This is what we're supposed to do. And Shannon, WGAL News 8. The 31st District State Senate seat, which represents Cumberland and York counties, is also up for grabs. Democrat Shanna Danielson is taking on Republican State Senator Mike Regan, who's represented York and Cumberland counties since 2016. Democrat Rich Sterner is running against Republican State Senator Doug Mastriano to represent the 33rd District, which covers Franklin County and parts of Adams, Cumberland, and York counties. Well, with more than 3 million mail-in ballots requested in Pennsylvania, our next voter guide focuses on how to fill them out correctly. Here's WGAL News 8's Matt Barcaro. So you've requested a mail-in ballot and have received one, and now you want to know how to properly fill your ballot out. So we will walk you through the process. The first thing you'll notice in your ballot packet is that it comes with a set of instructions. Depending on your county, the instructions may look a little different, but either way, you're going to want to read the instructions thoroughly and follow them precisely, or there's a chance that your vote will not be counted. When it comes to your ballot, you'll notice there's no straight party voting this year. That was eliminated with a state law. So you'll have to go race by race and make your selection. Filling out your ballot, you want to make sure you have a blue or black pen. Pencil can be erased. Marker can bleed through the paper. So blue or black ink pen is what you want to use. Then when it comes time to making your selection, 
follow the instructions on your ballot and make a clear selection for each race and make no other markings on your ballot or else it could get thrown out. Then it's time to stuff the envelopes. There's two. The first one is the official election ballot. This is the so-called secrecy envelope that we have heard a lot about. Your ballot goes in here first and then you seal it. And then you put this in the outer envelope that looks just like this. So you put your ballot in, you seal it, and then on the back of this envelope, this is really important, you have to sign it and put your information and then you're done. Make sure this is sealed. Now this can go into the mailbox. There's no postage necessary. That's already prepaid for you. You can also hand deliver this ballot to your county election office or a drop box if your county has one of those. Either way, the ballot has to be postmarked by election day, November 3rd, for it to be counted. I know there's a lot that we went over, but make sure you follow each of these steps precisely to make sure your vote counts. Matt Barcaro, WGAL News 8. Our next voter guide is coming up in about seven minutes. Matt Barcaro will show you how to check if your mail-in ballot has been mailed. And coming up after the break, we show you the extra measures being taken to protect voters from the coronavirus at polling places in Lancaster County.